welcome back everyone to our Let's Play of the Canadian, Canadian Powerful People Web. In the last episode everyone, we became a great power and officially are starting to make our own mark on the world. I mean, we already are bigger than the uh, Ottoman Empire. Not really considered an empire anymore, I don't think at this point, but we are now starting to make our own name in the world. Um, our last episode, we had a little mini crisis evolve about the Polish independence. And the Canadians have officially put their, f their stance down saying that we will not support any free, we will not support any of the sovereign nations. We will not support any of the freeing of any sovereign nation. We will try to always make the borders and the balance of power the same as it always has been. Okay, so excellent. Okay, anyways, now that we got that off my chest. Um, we got a couple of good expanding factories, which is good. That means work is going to be, you know, accelerated. And we need to start really building more and more factories in our place because we're honestly a big, gigantic country and we don't have any real factories or any real anything. So we have to, you know, we should probably build up a lot. So I'm just going to try to invest in as many factories that pop up over here because, yeah, this, we should be able to buy up all of the storeroom goods and as you know everyone the scramble for Africa is vastly approaching um I can't quite colonize any of these regions but it's vastly approaching um hopefully this will be enough range let me see let me see will this be enough range to reach these places um naval range shoot okay what about right here could I colonize this little island right here Midway Island. So I colonize this. Nope. Thanks a lot, Hawaii, for not building your own stupid naval port. Well, it's okay, it's okay. We're gonna build once we get analytical philosophy, then we'll start on our speaking of which, um here. I'm gonna start instead of encouraging builders now, I'm gonna encourage um what is it called? Clergymen. Because we need to start getting up. Because I don't think our population is the max of what it needs to be for optimal efficiency. Yeah, we are. We have to at least be at 2.0 clergymen and clerks to be at a good optimal rate. So we're going to try to start increasing that. I mean, it's going to increase pretty quickly because we have a very small population. And this kind of thing is not easy. It's not, like, hard to do. Because this, like, in Canada, this is our most populated areas. See? Look at that. And then over here is just, I mean, this is green. And Hawaii is green, and then all these other places are green. Is Malaysia green? No, it actually does have some markings, but if you look at the world map, this is all green. Like, we have some industrial score going on in Toronto and Canada. Um, I wish we could also get some more in Vancouver, but I think we're going to have to wait to grow the Vancouver Canucks. Okay. And, yeah, that's basically it. We're just going to, like I said, we're still just kind of chilling, but we are almost, we're getting almost ready for our, for our, um, Korean campaign. We definitely have enough soldiers now, I think, to go on Korea's, to go on Korea's bad side, and, oh, I think it's finally time, everyone. Oh, okay, so Mexico is our first speared nation ever, Canada has officially had its own first speared nation, and apparently we are 20th in the world in terms of power power we are barely on the edge of power but we're still in power so um don't know if that's a good sign or bad um see i don't have enough money to like start supporting all these other nations in there oh and guess what everyone the swords of the nile was discovered by guess what the canadians so our internal explorers have napped out salute no dang it god save the queen Oh man, I said the wrong intro. Okay, so welcome back everyone to another episode of The Canadians are becoming the great power of the world. So, in this episode, it's finally come to pass. We're finally ready for our invasion. So, let's just run it through it. Um, I'm going to land some troops right over here. And we're just going to try to move up slowly but surely all the way up to the capital and onward. Okay? Okay, so, Korea, declare war, establish protectorate, call in allies, UK likely. This will actually make, if the UK actually does join it, does 
join in. This will make the conquest much, much easier. Okay, now we add our troops and we just go put them on the border. And the treacherous, wow. UK, I never thought you guys were actually, why would you guys say no? Okay, so the UK said no to that. Maybe I can get an alliance. Will they still like an alliance with me or why did you guys say no? Um, that's really weird. Okay, would you guys like an alliance with me? No, they would not accept an alliance with me. So, let's see. Who wants to be my alliance? United States of A? No. Okay, so, Russia? No. Uh, Germany? No. France? No. Austria? No. Italy? No. Okay, so apparently Canada is by itself, and by the way, we moved up to fifth place. Um, Canada is by itself because no other great power wants to be its friend. Um, that's why I mean. I can make friends with Japan. Japan's not a bad person to be friends with. I mean, yes, they may have a little bit of problems here and there, but they're not bad people to be friends with. Okay, and I'm going to go send my, uh, where's my, there it is. I'm going to go send to Austria, and I better start... I'm going to rack up some debt here. I'm going to support them as much as possible. Okay, let's get back to business. Yeah, my economy is going to collapse for a little bit. Mining output did help a little bit, but it's not going to help a lot. Factory cost, and that actually would be a really good idea to make factories cost less, okay? But we have our soldiers moving in from the south. We have just, I think we have just enough for our soldiers to deal with. Okay, now we're going to move. I'm just going to keep right here because now we have a good foothold in Korea. Hmm. Man. Um, should I split? Okay. I'm going to split up my army to cover up more ground. Split. You guys go up there. You guys go right there. And we should have the unequivocal advantage of being a great power. So, I don't think the Koreans are going to be that much of a threat to us. Okay. And my troops have landed in... No, they're still not in Hawaii yet. Man, being a sea power just stinks. Okay, so we have... Should be almost time to go colonize these things. We're getting closer and closer, I know that. Okay. We have this. Okay, so the eternal crisis of that, we are not going to concern ourselves with, if we can. But as you know... They'll force us to, okay, move up our soldiers over here, and our entire, oh my goodness, 73 soldiers, that is not good, well, it's a good thing, so, the one good thing about this is that we know we still have the better soldiers, even with them having, that, even with them having more men, we still have the better soldiers, and, but, you know, sometimes numbers, or numbers do beat, um, people, so, I, I don't know, this, this is looking, I don't know, this is looking kind of scary right now, because, um, yeah, 75 troops, that's a lot, in any nation, that's a lot, so, I'm gonna move my troops right over here, that way we have three armies over here con conquering, um, conquering, okay, they're moving directly, nope, nope, I thought they were moving directly to Taijin, so, hey, I'm actually kind of following my invasion plan. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to move my soldiers over here, and what we'll do is I'll send, once these guys are finished, I'll send them into Wobu, and I'll send these guys to go group up in the, into Taiwan, or Taiwan, so that we have all this, and, oh my goodness, this is, this is going to gain our people valuable experience to know how to conquer other places. I mean, if, if we, this is going to be give us good experience to go figure out how we're going to fight the Chinese. And right now, the Koreans are scared of us. So they're not going to attack us at any point in this, which is good. And honestly, I'm a little bit scared of Korea right now. Because if, that, that, if that is all their army, then we might have a chance. But if they have any more troops in the back, reserved or anything, the issue deserves consideration. Yes, the beta's prison, the issue does deserve consideration. I do believe in that. Um, and, yeah, this, this is definitely a worry. But the problem is, is that once we do this conquest, I think, I think averagely Korea has 2 million population, so, 
Um, that means they're probably gonna be there's probably gonna be more Koreans out there than there ever were of of can of the Canadians. So yeah, this is gonna be quarantine the affected area. We don't want to make sure any of these areas are affected. Okay. Um. Okay. So I'm just gonna wait right here, and then the next the next thing I'm thinking of is that I'm going to to hopefully what I'm gonna do is I'm hopefully gonna attack right here. I'm going to hopefully draw out some of these guys from the capital because if I attack the capital, I'm dead. I know for a fact that the capital is way too heavily guarded for me to take over. But if I take over there, if I take over this part, then I might have a chance. And then they might draw out more of the soldiers down here, which then might give me advantage. So we just have to see. Um, actually, actually, a better way of doing this would be... Wait, because I don't want to... I don't like the river advantage that some of these nations get free trade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely move up some of my nations to do that. And then once they're ready, send in both... Oh, oh good! The splitting up, the splitting up. Okay, wait for them to split up. Okay, good. Okay, attack them both. We're going to go on an all-out offensive against these guys. Hopefully our men will be... Okay, we have way more men... We're crushing them. Okay. Yeah. Now that we got this, okay. Everyone, go together. Start taking back all these places. We're going to crush the majority. And colonial crisis. And I argue that this present resurgence of native upgrades in our colony is due only to the continued repeat and war and mistreatment that our own officials have imposed on the locals. But if the purpose of our presence is is our far flung colonies to uplift and educate, our failure is all the worse when we accomplish the exact opposite. Native militancy is rising in our colonies, and resorts have researching Ottawa that the reason for this upsurge in violence is several instances of colonial mistreatment. We can seek to redress the problem by finding scapegoats in the colonial office, but happy bureaucrats might be more important than happy natives in some godforsaken country. We must seek an effective, honest, and diligent administration. Very concerning, but oh my, it's almost tea time. Quicker, quicker ladder, anyone? Um, we must search for a more effective, diligent organization. Okay, and we're... Okay, that's... No, not planned economy. Planned economy would definitely not work for our, for our people. Okay. I'll keep this open, just because it might help us. Okay. Yep. Okay. Last one. Oh. Okay, this is the last fight. If they, if we can beat them here, then they're not... Oh. Did we do it? Yes. Okay, they're not coming back now. Now we have free reign to just go take over Korea. Let's go defeat the last army. And, well, I guess they still have technically a chance, but now they're basically gone. Because now we have it. They don't have any more troops after this. We have all of the thing, and we need to keep taking down our, um, we should do this, because that's going to make up three. Okay, yes, 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 the last army! Okay, no. Oh, yes! Okay, so everyone, that was the entire Korean army. It's gone. The entire Korean army is gone. Well, they're trying to make some soldiers back here, but it's mainly gone, and so now we have complete reign to just go in and take over as much of Korea as possible and apparently the socialists and the ultra liberals are starting to gain power but the ultra liberals and the liberals are the most powerful nation in our entire economy so I'm not worried I'm not worried at all okay and more of our businesses need more people building build a steamer ship okay I would not support a clipper shipyard I don't know why you guys are supporting a clipper shipyard um, I'll support a steamer ship oh dang I'll support a steamer shipyard, but not a clipper shipyard. That's just, that's just not going to fly with me. Steamer shipyard, that's just not going to fly. Okay, go right here. Oh man, we did it. We took over Seoul, everyone. That means it's onward to the rest of the Paijang. And then we're basically all done with Korea. Wow. And our economy not doing the best right now. But I think with the, the sweetest fear... I mean, these newspapers are starting to pile up, so I'm just going to let you guys hear all of them. Yeah, these are all the newspapers, and right now we're just, <laughs> we're kind of sitting pretty at the end of the world. Um, right now, China, I'm hoping, is not partly westernized. 
No, they're still an uncivilized nation, so that means we could still we could still partly take them on if Russia were to declare war. Hmm. And Japan. We're gonna be adding Japan into our sphere, even though I think Japan will probably rise to the ranks and become a great power. Um we're gonna add him as our friend, because no one else likes Japan, I mean Canada. So we're gonna try to get some of